Welcome to Advanced Sci-Fi Civilizations Too Stupid To Really Exist. Before we set sail, please make sure you are subscribed and don't forget to hit that bell button. In this episode, humanity takes on a uniquely ham-fisted invasion force. They came to use our water, but not to harvest it, to wallow in it for a while and shoot off a few beams into the sky. Besides that, we have no idea why they're here, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that they don't know either. It's The Regents, from Battleship. The movie that makes other game adaptations seem slightly more coherent. Let Battleship lower your expectations even further, as we flesh out a universe built on the flimsiest of all source materials, a non-narrative board game. And you thought the references in Super Mario Bros were tenuous. Battleship wins that game in the minimum amount of moves required. India 3-7. India 3-7. Loaded. Sir. Sir, if you would please just give me an order. I don't know what to do, sir. It's also riddled with so many Navy-specific technical errors. This movie is bound to infuriate the very audience it attempts to endear itself to. <laughs> So these passive-aggressive space pirates splash down, and they've got some kind of plan to carry out. They're not overtly hostile, though a tad pretentious, in that they will not fire on anything that isn't currently a threat. They act more like a bully who goads their victim into taking a swipe, and then punishes them for having the nerve. These unwelcome planetary invaders would be nothing without their values. Anyway, there's nothing to get concerned about, because our listless no-hoper protagonist, Lieutenant Hopper, manages to defeat these militant alien hippies in between bouts of chronic fatigue. And even then, he only needed a decommissioned 1944 battleship to do it. I saved the world. So put the foot soldiers at ease, power down the tanks, and downgrade the likelihood of nuclear retaliation to maybe later because we'll only need a severely limited military force to defeat this piddly and ineffectual invasion. And then maybe we can fish out the wreckage and try to figure out what in the hell they were doing here in the first place. Point 1. Their invasion plan is reckless and ultimately pointless. So the human establishment in Battleship sends a message to an Earth-like planet they found. Props for developing a form of communication that can seemingly travel faster than the speed of light. But obviously, these humans aren't a bunch of geniuses either. You gotta stop tapping. You, you're tapping, you're the loud one. And of course, there ends up being aliens on this planet, who respond to this naive friend request by hurtling a pile of space junk towards Earth. Acquiring courage. Acquiring courage. But it turns out, it's actually spaceships. These craft don't just look like they're out of control, they practically are, since one of them smashes into a satellite on its way down. It's their communication ship which ends up crashing into Hong Kong, because Chinese cinema dollars. The fact that you know that infuriates me beyond words. Yes, the regents have the distinct pleasure of messing up their plan before they've even fully entered Earth's atmosphere. That could be a first. What, you couldn't detect the satellite in your flight path? Sensors. The Earth creatures contacted you on a high energy broadcast. They might have satellites, you know. So the surviving ships end up crashing into the ocean with all the finesse of an asteroid. Since their communication ship lies trashed in the streets of Hong Kong, establishing communication with HQ seems to become the main driving force of their entire invasion. Next, they secure the area and set their sights on a human communication station. Since humans refuse to take any kind of shit from alien invaders, Let's drop some lead on those motherfuckers! A conflict becomes inevitable. It's safe to say that if it wasn't for their cowardly shield, this invasion force would be destroyed in a literal flash. But don't be too concerned about those humans trapped within because the regents seemingly will not fire on anything that is not currently a threat. And we're not just talking about staying your blade when it comes to pregnant women or children. These guys will ignore military vessels that are armed to the teeth. As long as you hold your fire and don't aim your cannons in their direction, they won't even look at you. If Lieutenant Tuvok were here, I know he would tell you there are times 
when violence is required. The regents are so concerned with saving human lives, they will send in a saboteur rather than just blow up your vessel. They massively underestimate their enemies, and their reluctance to attack first allows humans a tactical advantage. Congrats! You now have enough breathing room to develop a comprehensive strategy, and you've even been gifted the first volley. Just make sure it's big. I will schedule additional battle drills for all hands. The full repercussions of the Regent's sustained campaign of mercy are extremely dire. Initially, they do everything within their power to avoid destroying the John Paul Jones, a ship that goes on to destroy three of the four main Regent ships, with a crew that goes on to finish off the fleet entirely. This rickety barge and its half-witted crew. They may be more thoughtful than your typical invaders, but they have the usual arrogance and overconfidence that comes with many a technologically superior alien race. Aliens? Eventually, these reluctant killers develop a more confused moral code when they obliterate an airbase and some infrastructure. Not anything that important, mind you. Just some highways on an island in the middle of the Pacific. It's a move designed to secure this communication station they're obsessed with. They still ignore Timmy at the sandlot, but they don't seem to have a problem destroying highways filled with commuters and smashing helicopters mid-flight. I guess the regents can bring themselves to kill a few non-threatening people, but only when they do it with autonomous drones and they don't have to personally witness anyone dying. After taking care of some initial troublemakers, the regents launch some aircraft towards the array and immediately crash one of their ships off screen. Where do we find it? The one that transported must have crashed on the way over to the island. There was debris everywhere. Thomas and Puss just fished him right out of the water with a grappling hook and I told them it was a bad idea but they kept yanking. I kept telling them no. The mortality rate of the Regent's military must be extremely high because so far they've crashed a ship on every mission they've launched. Though this time the Regent dude survives and ends up showing us possibly the most reckless telepathic ability we've ever seen. Reminiscent of a Vulcan mind meld. Except it's absolutely useless in the context of a battlefield. I hope the Regent got some sort of intel during this process. Vulcans do not hydrosail. Because it sure as hell seemed like he just shared the Regent invasion plan with his enemy. That's definitely not good. This glimpse into the mind of a Regent gives us the most information we have about their motivations. But it still ain't much. There's a planet blowing up. And presumably that's gonna be us. Hopper seems to think so. I got a bad feeling about this. What kind of bad feeling? Like we're gonna need a new planet. Kind of bad feeling. Once they finally make it to this communication station, they temporarily turn into the more psycho alien invaders we all know and love when they apparently kill the scientist dude's grad students in cold blood. Okay. Okay. Oh no, they'll be sweet. They killed my grad students. And then not long after, a commander from that same group of regents lets him walk free with this tech he was lifting. Maybe that guy was like, you know, going to use that to do something to stop your invasion. You don't know. You better not let him take it just in case. This could be the dumbest single move any regent makes and it appears to be one of their leaders or engineers. They should definitely know better. Good choice. So before they lost their communication ship, it appears the original plan was to splash down and call HQ immediately. Reinforcements would be a good idea I suppose, because their force is puny and even the most arrogant of species wouldn't assume this would be enough to take on any half-civilized civilization. What exactly is the point of all this? Okay, maybe it's a recon force or something. It still doesn't make any sense. The regents knew there was a civilization here because the humans sent a message practically begging for invasion. Whatever the capabilities of the earth creatures, you should know straight off the bat that this force isn't going to be enough to do anything but cower under its shield and frantically call up requesting more muscle. I'm not saying that you're a boob, but this is like boobish behavior. I suppose that if the small scout force did get destroyed by the locals, the lack of contact with home base would probably also trigger the next wave. More ships seem destined to come to Earth no matter what happens, when your ships can seemingly travel faster than light. Sending a large force, or at least an ongoing supply of reinforcements, doesn't seem that big of a deal. 
There are a few things we could theorize to partly justify the Regent's invasion strategy. There are only three alternatives I can discern at this time. One, the invaders are a small scientific task force designed to analyze the suitability of Earth's resources, which of course is something an advanced civilization should be able to do from high orbit. Long range scans. And I don't know what you're here for, but I'm almost 100% certain you can find that shit in abundance elsewhere. Two, these poor saps are used as expendable guinea pigs to test the capabilities of the locals before a full-scale invasion is carried out. Stupid Nick and Provide. Three, and my personal fave, the Regents have been coerced by another alien race, entity, or perhaps their own dystopian government to destroy any other civilizations that are discovered, eliminating future competition. Their name itself suggests that they are not the top dogs. Because if so, they, 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 they've gone way too far. But since it's not always assured that you'll be able to get a message home, all of those seem like terrible ideas. Still makes no sense. While these theories may explain their reluctance to inflict violence, they don't excuse much of the poor form we see during the course of their invasion. Besides their obsession with phoning home, there may indeed have been another stage to their plan that remains unknown. But whatever the case, it would be better to just send a decent force that will be able to hold its ground. I mean water. And then carry out whatever work you need to do unchallenged. These aliens may be plagued by vagueness, but I see no way to fully justify this whole deal. Not to mention you're taking on movie humans. And that means that any genocidal campaign can only end with your own destruction. Though their invasion itself, and some of the strategic moves they make in the course of their plan, are highly questionable. Nothing can compare to how underprepared the Regents are when it comes to going toe to toe with the locals. Point 2. Their ships are ill suited for their purpose. Normally, the humans of sci-fi fair need to have their abilities pumped up by the narrative, to justify them defeating the invaders. But not in this movie, when it comes to what it takes to sass aliens. Battleship sets the bar to its lowest possible setting. If it wasn't already obvious, these guys are all about wallowing around in water. It is a design we have not encountered before. Preferring to mount their invasion from the relative safety of the sea and the protection of their shield. Yeah man, really weird. I guess most habitable worlds would have at least some bodies of water. But it still seems pretty limiting when it comes to carrying out your mysterious scheme. That would make Earth a great target thanks to our land to sea ratio. In other words, battlefield conditions are close to ideal for the regents. So then you'd expect that a military force with this degree of specialization would be absolute badasses in their chosen field. But here they shatter your preconceptions once again. For they are severely lacking when it comes to this whole naval warfare thing. For a start, the Regent's ship's main form of locomotion is to flop around from place to place, like an injured porpoise, or at best, an elephant seal on heat. Perhaps the ship's stabilizers are not operating at peak efficiency. It seems to be a form of limited flight, which as we know is not the Regent's forte. I'd probably stick close to the water too, but besides their unconventional technique being generally awkward, their ships just don't seem all that fast. Even when in full belly flop mode, the speed of these craft is comparable to conventional earth vessels. These little jumps are presumably designed to avoid incoming volleys and gain a better attacking position. Though considering how ungainly their movements are, it seems they're more likely to jump up and into whatever shitstorm of ordnance is coming their way. At night, the Regent ships get even more ineffectual. Our good guys deduce that they don't appear to have any type of radar or meaningful sensors that can detect the position of an enemy ship. I don't think they can see us either. Why? Because we are still alive. Okay, so they can't see us and we can't see them. And we have no way to hit them from a safe distance. There is a way. These guys can only determine your position once you've fired on them. Really? long-range sensors. Compared to the Regent ships, our Tsunami boys provide more usable sensor data. And that's not even what we designed them for. Have you guys actually ever been in a sea battle before? A legitimate question. Even in the daytime, when the Regents are in their comfort zone of being able to confirm targets visually. 
things don't exactly get much better. It's strange that broad daylight is their preferred time of operation, because the regents are extremely sensitive to our sun. So of course they're heavily reliant on their sun shielded bridge to look at enemy ships and decide whether they're scary enough to fire on. But unfortunately this bridge window can be shattered to pieces with just a few high calibre bullets. You'd think the mothership would be better, but you'd be wrong. She takes some time to raise herself up from the water to engage with the enemy. Meanwhile the shield generators are poking up all vulnerable above the waves. And once these generators are eventually destroyed, a blue explosion emanates from the interior of the ship. Presumably it's the power generator attached to the shield. Let's not forget that everything about the regent's invasion completely relies on the shield. Do you want to die today? But if you're quick enough you can destroy it, while also heavily damaging the mothership itself. If only we had some more savvy human players. This invasion could have been mostly over in one or two shots. Brother, somebody gonna kiss the donkey. It's bad enough that the Regent ships serve as a platform from which to deploy their more offensive military hardware. But even worse, most of their other toys aren't really up for a game either. Point 3. The rest of their military hardware is ill suited for its purpose. The regents apparently have only two forms of main weaponry. These token source reference launchers and these close to unstoppable, unspeakably badass shredder contraptions. Let's start with the easy one. It's classic lowbrow ballistic weaponry and it goes boom pretty good. But besides their somewhat impressive destructive potential, these peg launchers are inferior to conventional navy turrets in almost every conceivable way. What? They have questionable range. They can't take out small vessels at close range. And perhaps their most serious flaw. Once fired they aren't self propelled and they appear to be far slower than earth projectiles. And therefore the enemy ships course must be predicted. And the trajectory of the pegs adjusted accordingly. What are we supposed to do? Fight the enemy where they aren't? Move like water? You better hope your enemy doesn't learn to zigzag. It also doesn't help that the pegs apparently need to charge all over again every time you move the ship. So I guess this is what the constant flopping around is all about. They're mostly just compensating for their shitty peg launchers. That seems like a really illogical way to address the shortcomings of your weaponry. And the mothership has even worse cannons than the smaller ships. This ship essentially needs to be facing its enemy dead on. Why are these things even designed to grind against their housing when it reaches its maximum angle? I'm at a loss with who to blame here. The designers, the operator who was pointlessly grinding this thing, or the commander who should have known immediately they would need to maneuver the ship in order to hit their target. I didn't know five seconds ago, and I don't know now. These boxed in peg launchers essentially demote the mothership to the status of a sea based ATAT. Now the mothership's secondary weapons. I can't do much except gush about these shredder monstrosities. Why would you use anything else but these? I don't know why! The regents seem at their happiest bobbing around in the water like a drowning toddler. I can't understand why they would do anything at all except send out legions of these indestructible shredder things. Lead with that next time, okay? Okay, so they may look indestructible sometimes. But it appears they can be taken out by heat seeking missiles. So as badass as we want these things to be, in the end this offensive weapon relies completely on a lack of enemy ground defenses and air force. They aren't fast enough to catch a jet in flight and the peg launchers would be pretty ineffective against aircraft too. From a tactical point of view, the options are not encouraging. I'm not sure what these guys were doing mucking around at this military airfield in Hawaii. Surely there are some jets around, and if even a few managed to get airborne, it would most probably be the immediate end of this invasion. Now to the naval foot soldiers of the regent's forces. There seem to be several types, engineer and or commander guys, and these muscly dudes known as thugs. We won't bother too much with the leader slash engineer types, because we've already covered most of their stupidity. So let's look at the thugs possible cyborgs oh shit, is he a cyborg? who really do need tactically functional suits to lay the smack down. 
This mechanized gauntlet can transform into numerous implements, including a range of different shank options. So really, this thing is pretty sweet. But where is the damn gun? This thug can conjure up a painfully slow energy weapon. But surely a more practical projectile weapon wouldn't go amiss. These bulky mech suits do all of the necessities of Regent life support quite well, I guess. It lets them breathe their sweet Planet G air. It shields their eyes from even the mildest sunstrike or fake lens flare. And it's even got a nifty augmented reality display that mostly makes soldiers not kill their enemies. The display also paints a friendly injured target in red, the same color as a threatening enemy. That's definitely gonna cause some friendly fire deaths at some point. You should look into changing that. As for navigating the battlefield from within the suit, things aren't exactly ideal. We sometimes hear things from the perspective of the suit wearer. The soundproofing in their suits is great for decreasing the volume of nearby gunshots. But it's not just gunshots that are muffled, it's everything. Low volume noises can sometimes be of concern too. Like a massive cannon slowly winding its way towards you. It's important things like this that you need to be able to hear on the battlefield if you want to avoid being obliterated. That guy was right next to it and he couldn't hear a damn thing. I'm not sure what the regent's natural hearing is like, but if it's weak, then the suit should be designed to amplify it, because it's obviously quite the disadvantage to be nearly stone deaf on the battlefield. And this tank unit dude himself seems to have generally slow reaction times. Mahalo, mother. But most concerningly, the helmets on all of their suits can be ripped off quite easily, which severely disorients the grunt within. Some kind of Donald Trump Mike Tyson mutant combo. Yet another exploitable regent weakness to add to an already long list. This former soldier is obviously just plain tough, with or without his legs. But I'm sorry, there's no scenario where it's okay for your bulky armored suit wearing main tank unit to be defeated by an unarmed disabled man. Turn the damn thing off! And a briefcase wielding nerd. Turn it off now! But I guess it doesn't help when your enemies basically have magic. In what must be the most impressive example of military refurbishment we've seen since Battlefield Earth. Hopper rubs a bit of spit shine on a 1944 battleship floating museum drafts some old salts he found hanging around on the docks, and manages to outwit the alien mothership using an unexpected anchor drop. And so the regent ships end up little more than a bunch of discarded wreckage, destined to swirl around with the rest of the trash in the Great Pacific garbage patch. Though the regents may have got off a cheeky signal before they were bested, an allusion to a possible sequel. But after their performance in Battleship, I think it's safe to say that this is one franchise they will struggle to keep afloat. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.